Indiana State University basketball is on the air. Brought to you by the Mies Stores, Terre Haute First National Bank, Pabst Beer, your Wabash Valley Pontiac dealers, and the Forest Shear Agency. State basketball is on the air. A very pleasant good evening, everybody, from Robertson Fieldhouse in uh, Peoria, Illinois, on the campus of Bradley University. It's Indiana State Sycamores against the Bradley Braves. Bradley, of course, coached by Dick Versace, the very uh, fiery coach of this Bradley team. Indiana State undefeated and ranked second in the nation. This field house is jam-packed. 7,300 it will hold, and I'm sure there are 7,300 plus here tonight, and it's going to be a very noisy field house as the Bradley Braves would like nothing better than to spoil the Sycamores winning streak, which is 21 straight this season. We'll be back with the starting lineup after this 90-second pause. This is the voice of the Sycamores. Your Wabash Valley Pontiac dealers want you to know that you can own this beautiful, fully equipped Bonneville loaded with factory air, cruise control, and wire wheel covers for less than 100 Robertson Fieldhouse. This is Bob Forbes along with Dwayne Clee as we bring you a simulcast over WTHI AM and FM radio and, of course, on WTHI TV Channel 10. So we do uh, welcome you all here tonight for this broadcast and or telecast, as the case may be, wherever you may be, and hope, of course, that you'll enjoy tonight's game between Indiana State and Bradley. And, Dwayne, even though the Sycamores won the first game easily, 93-74, to 74, uh, you never can take an opponent lightly, especially when you're playing in his own backyard. That's right, and uh, Indiana State's uh, first win over Bradley was a 19-pointer. It uh, served to be the only blowout, really blowout, that Bradley has suffered, and most of their losses, their 14 losses, have been under 10 points. And they had uh, a two-point game here with Drake, and Drake, of course, uh, ranks uh, third in the conference race right now behind New Mexico State, so you never can tell. And if the crowd has anything to do with the uh, way the Bradley Braves are playing tonight, they should play very well. Well, you can tell just uh, by the electricity in this field house that uh, the Bradley fans are hoping for, a, uh, for an upset. They're here not only to see the Sycamores, but to uh, really get behind their Braves. Bradley shoots 46% from the field. Indiana State shoots 49% from the field. From the foul line, very close. Indiana State is 65% free throw shooting team. Bradley 66% from the line. Indiana State 21-0 in the season, 11-0 in conference play, and Bradley 7-14 on the season and 1-10 and in the conference play. About the only thing Bradley can hope for now is to stay alive and finish in eighth place ahead of West Texas State, which will enable them to continue on in the postseason uh, tournament play. That's right, and to, to do this, uh, they realize they're going to have to start winning a few of these games. They've uh, lost, what was it, their last six? Yes. And uh, I'm sure they're uh, ready to do what they can tonight. Dick Versace, the uh, very, uh, oh, he's very personable, but uh, very uh, uh, fiery and... Uh, I guess you could say that uh, some of the people here in Bradley like him and some of them maybe <laughs> don't like him. <laughs> well, I understand that uh, two games ago, one of the officials we have tonight uh, yes. just kicked him out of the ball game. Right. And then uh, the following game, he refused at the start of the game to shake hands with this right. official. But I noticed a while ago that he was out there smiling and they were talking. So uh, everything's smoothed over. Ben Dreith and J.C. Lauterbach are the officials for tonight's game. And we'll have the introduction of tonight's starting lineup. This is a old airplane hangar, a couple of B-29 hangars, 29 years ago, at the cost of uh, half a million dollars. And today, even though it is antiquated, you couldn't even touch this place for that. No, cost. there's a lot of cubic feet in this place. Brad Miley, one of the forwards at 6'8 Junior from Rushville, averaging 6.1. Ken Garrett, 6'7", junior, Buchanan, Michigan, averaging 12.4 points per game, 40% from the field, 77% from the line. 6'7", junior. junior, East St. Louis, number 42, Alex Gilbert. Will be starting for Indiana State. And from Springfield, Harold McMath, 6'6", junior. 
Averaging 8.6, 46% from the field, 67% from the line. Averages 9.5 rebounds per game. At center, number 33, Larry Bird, 6'9", senior French Lick. Of course, leads the nation in scoring, 30.3. Second and third the nation in rebounding. I think he's third, second or third, 15.2 average. Right at it, second or third. And the center is uh, Robert Jenkins, 6'5", senior from Fort Myers, Florida. Averaging 12.3, shoots 45% from the field, 62% from the line. The guards for Indiana State from Chicago, six foot three junior Carl Nix averages 19.1 points a game, 46% from the field, 65% from the line. And for Bradley, Carl Maniscalco, 5'10 junior from Chicago, leads the team in assists with 110, averages 10.6. The other guard, Steve Reed, 6'2 sophomore from Warsaw, leads Indiana State in assists with 138, averages 4.1. And the other guard, their leading scorer, averaging 21.4 points a game. Number 11, Mitchell Anderson, 6'7", freshman from Chicago. 47% from the field, 72% from the line. And he, of course, will be a superstar here at Bradley. In that first game, here's the way the scoring went. Garrett had eight, Jenkins had 11, McMath had four, Maniscalco had four, and Anderson had 26. The starters for Indiana State that first game, won by Indiana State, 93-74. to Larry Bird had 27, Brad Miley 10, Alex Gilbert 8. Carl Nix 24, Steve Reed did not score, and that's the way they line up, and uh, you're very close to the game here, and you're a little bit below the game, you might say, Dwayne, the people are sitting at floor level, because about three feet above actual floor level. Yes, they, uh, they have a raised floor, and the fans are, uh, well, just uh, going away from the floor on the sides for uh, what appears to be a long, long distance, and the total crowd of 7,300 are all, almost all, on the sides, maybe 100 or so on the ends. Indiana State wearing their light blue uniforms, their road uniforms, dressed in, uh, trimmed in white and dark blue. Bradley in their white uniforms, trimmed in red and black. They're the Bradley Braves, coached by Dick Versace, and uh, they won an upset here tonight. It'll be Robert Jenkins against Gilbert, and it's taken by McMath of Bradley, the tip. Back to Maniscalco. Maniscalco in the corner to Robert Jenkins. Jenkins back out in the middle. Around that man-to-man uh, -man defense at the baseline. Mitchell Anderson, a jump shot from 13. is not there, and Bird has the rebound. Out to, Car uh, rather to Steve Reed, and Reed will set it up. Across the timeline. Steve in a walking dribble now. Bradley man-to-man. -man. Nix from the right side fires and scores, and Carl hits his first shot. And the first two for Indiana State. The Sycamores lead it 2 to nothing right off the bat. Maniscalco and Anderson are the uh, guards up front. Garrett Jenkins and McMath. It's McMath. Looks for Maniscalco. Left wing pass to Mitch Anderson. Anderson baseline to McMath again. Circles around. Throws to Maniscalco. On the left side open is Garrett. Fires and missed. And Carl Nix clears. Two missed shots by Bradley. Rebounded by Bird and Nix. Harold McMath has the uh, defensive job on Larry Bird. Same spot for Nix, and he does it again. It looks, it appears, Bob, as if they're playing the box uh, zone with uh, McMath playing Bird man-to-man. -man. So that's the way Bradley sets up defensively. Maniscalco cross-courts it. In the corner it comes to Jenkins. Jenkins lays it up, around and out, and Miley picks that one down. That was a tough break for Bradley. Good drive. Indiana State ahead, 4 to nothing, with 18.37 left to play in the first half. Reed top the circle, bounce pass right. Carl from the same spot, doesn't go this time, but he uh, goes into the lane, throws to Miley, he's there beautifully. So Carl penetrates, dropped the pass to Miley as they begged off of Brad, and Brad gets the field goal. Indiana State, 3 out of 3, 6 to nothing. Maniscalco in the corner. McMath looks for Garrett. Now he's covered by Gilbert, clears it out. Center court to Robert Jenkins. Jenkins to Garrett. Garrett to McMath. He works and shoots over Gilbert for 14. Missed it. Rebound. Then Mitchell Anderson missed it. And he's fouled. Either Reed or Nix. It's on number 22, Carl Nix. So he tried to take the shot, and uh, Carl reached up and fouled him at the line. Mitchell Anderson with a pair of free throws. It's his first one. He's a 72% free throw shooter. Second one, and it's not good. Rebound, fought far, recovered by Garrett. Out to Anderson to Maniscalco in the corner to McMath. He 
goes in the lane and we have a whistle and a foul and the foul will be on Alex Gilbert. Yes, McMath with a strong uh, move to the basket was uh, fouled by Alex Gilbert reaching in. That's the first one on Gilbert, the second team foul. Common foul, puts the ball in play. Bradley in the baseline to Jenkins. Jenkins over the head, pass off to McMath, left side of the lane to uh, Garrett. Garrett now back pedals to McMath in the corner. Maniscalco takes uh, Reed off his feet. Now he goes into the lane, puts it up over Bird. Missed it, tipped up once, not good again. Anderson not good. Bird finally clears. They had two good tap-ins, couldn't get him to go down. They're having a little trouble on that uh, offensive end. Still 6-1 uh, to one, Indiana State. Carl from the same spot, doesn't shoot it, goes baseline. Bounce back out, Gilbert from 12, and missed it. And rebounding, Robert Jenkins, who leads the team in rebounding with a, our second with 7.6 average. Open, Anderson from 9, score. Mitchell Anderson, a big guard at six foot seven. Something uh, unusual is taking place uh, by Bradley in the uh, defensive end of the court. Man, the Scalco and McMath are guarding Bird. One in front, one in back, and they're playing a three-man zone. Carl Nix from the same spot. He's found that, and now he's not going to give it up, and they're letting him shoot it. Now right. he may shoot him in all night long. Uh, the other four Sycamores are going to find they can might have a turkey shoot out there if uh, the defense stays the same way. There is a fadeaway shot up in the air. Good by Tim Garrett for his first two. Larry Bird's not had a shot yet. No. Nope. But however... Uh, Nix is three out of three, and Miley's one out of one. It's eight to five, Indiana State by three. 20 footer, Steve, yeah. <laughs> wow, are they hitting the basketball? They're five out of five. Right. They're really popping it in. McMath fired. He got it. Yeah. 16 foot jump shot, McMath, and they stay right with them, and now Bradley's. Uh, beginning to catch fire. I wonder if Larry's ever faced this before. Two men assigned actually to him. They're both over there facing him on the other uh, right, side McMath of the court. and Maniscalco. Here is Nix. Bounces back to Reed to Gilbert. He's open from an eight-footer. Short, not good. Got his own rebound. Puts it up. Missed it. And Miley fights for it. Can't get it. Maniscalco saves it nicely to McMath. It's 10-7 to 7, Indiana State by three. So they're really double-teaming Larry. They're not going to let him shoot the ball if they can keep from it. Nope. Mitchell jump, Anderson fires and scores from about 14 away, and it's five for Anderson. That makes it 10 to nine. Bradley down by just one. Mitchell Anderson, a fine uh, shooter, just uh, I think the second leading freshman scorer in the country. Time out, and uh, they want to talk it over on this defense on Larry with Maniscalco and the fast. Both really two time, and he will be back in 60 seconds. This is the voice of the Sycamore. There's an extra special winter coat clearaway sale now in progress at all. Bradley is four out of 11 from the field, 36%, one out of two from the line. Indiana State's five out of eight for 62%, which stands right now. 10 to nine, Indiana State by one. And uh, let's see if they, uh, Bobby Heaton has come in for Alex Gilbert. Now Maniscalco and McMath are both on Bird. That yeah. means that Miley apparently well, uh, Bobby Heaton's coming in now because they need that other, they're playing four men with three, and uh, Bobby's a good outside shooter, and they know that's what they're going to have to do with the two on Bird. Well, now they've changed back. They've now they're about that box and, uh, box and one. Nick's again, and Nick's hits again. Yeah. Boy, Carl is red hot. That's eight for Carl. Four out of four from the field. Maniscalco with his team down by three. Garrett penetrates, bounces a pass baseline to McMath. He goes around Heaton, puts it up, and missed it. The ball is taken off the backboard by Jenkins, and he missed it, and Carl Nix comes down with it. That's about two of those. Ladies. Yes, they've had uh, some tough luck on that. Reed, Heaton from 19. Bobby pans it, and the Sycamores are red hot. That's the kind of thing that'll break the uh, zone and special defenses. Mitchell Anderson baseline from nine. It's a flange. Not good. Again, not good. We're going to have a uh, foul on Bradley, or on uh, Brad Miley, one of the two. On Miley, apparently. It's on Brad, and that is his uh, Miley reaching in. Yes, he Miley came from behind. It looked like perhaps uh, Robert Jenkins was doing a little of that pushing, yes, right. but uh, uh, Brad got in behind him and may have caused it. So it's 14-9 uh, Indiana State with 14-49 left to play in the half. Inbounded, baseline, open Jenkins, and missed it. Tipped up beautifully by Jenkins, or rather uh, Garrett. Ken Garrett, 6'7", wow. Ken Garrett got way up there with Over his left Bobby hand. Heaton. Right. Now they're back to that uh, two-timing defense. Again. Bobby again. Bobby missed it, and a foul is called on Harold McMath of Bradley. 
Yes, McMath trying to keep uh, Larry Bird off that offensive board. Just got his uh, weight into him too much, caught by the official. That's the first foul on McMath and the first team foul on Bradley. Backcourt pass to Steve Reed, in to Miley. Baseline back to Nix in the lane. Throws it to Miley. He's there and he's got it. What a pass, Carl Nix. Yes, Carl Nix really showed great body control in making the drive through there, making a couple of fakes while in the air. 16 to 11. They're shutting off Bird, but nobody else. There's Anderson losing the ball. Maniscalco picks it up, pops it in the air. Not good. Deep rebound. They fight for it. Carrot comes out with it. Anderson shooting over Miley. Missing. And Garrett again with the rebound. Garrett off the glass and got it. Boy, they're really battling that offensive board. Yes, they're hitting the offensive board. Uh, and uh, as a consequence, are getting uh, quite a few shots uh, at the hoop. Bobby Heaton left wing. Reed, top of the circle, off to Carl. He's open from 14, and he cans it again. He's got 10 points, and he's 5 out of 5. 18 to 13. Here's Mitch Anderson with it. Bobbed in the middle, down low. Garrett spinning, shooting, short, front edge of the rim. Rebound fought for, re controlled by uh, Carl Nix, and he deflects it, I believe, bounced it off the leg of one of the Bradley players. Well, he did uh, accomplish just what he tried to do, uh, bounce it off one of their feet. Brad... Uh, Miley, Bobby Heaton, Carl Nix, Steve Reed, Larry Bird, as Alex Gilbert will be. There's Nix again, and Carl missed one. That's that hot spot. There's the ball thrown away intended for Jenkins. They overthrew it as Alex Gilbert checks into the Indiana State lineup for Brad Miley. Brad Bradley trying to use that zone to advantage once they get the uh, rebound by throwing the long pass, getting the fast break, but they couldn't quite do it. That's the first turnover of the game, and it comes with 13-18 <laughs> left to play in the first half. A lot of good shooting going on. Bobby Heaton open, one step, the one pass dribble, fires it, not good, Bird has it, can't get it, and Maliscalco comes up with it. Larry Bird's not had a shot yet. Cross-court pass, Anderson on the run, back to Jenkins from the foul line, got it. Cooper Jenkins, 18 to 15, Indiana State by three, with 12:55 left to play in the first half. They have really done a job as Maniscalco now Heaton penetrates off the glass, no good, and a foul is on Bob Heaton for a charge. That's one on Heaton and four on the team. We have gone nine minutes, a little over. And no, I'm sorry. Seven and a Seven half. and a half minutes, about. And Larry Bird is not taking a shot. He's only handled it once, as I yes, recall. He's only had it one time. Touched the ball. Garrett with it. Now he's off the dribble. They apply pressure. Over to McMath. McMath looks in the lane. Over the head pass in the corner. Back out it comes. The ball deflected away. Alex Gilbert fights for it. Can't hang on to it. Now touches it last. Goes out of bounds. Couldn't quite get uh, a hold of it. He, uh, he had a lead on it, but couldn't quite hold it. Indiana State coaches thought one of the Bradley players batted it out of bounds. So Bradley could move to within a point here. They're trailing by three. McMath, right side of the circle, over the head pass. Open is Garrett, a high arching shot, not good. And Steve Reed in good position takes the rebound. Looks for the long lead pass and doesn't chance it. Bird's pretty well covered. Here's Reed in the middle. Garrett, oh, right through the fingertips of Alex Gilbert as Reed found him open. Yes, he certainly did. Uh, Alex was uh, right under the basket. And they're, on, they're playing our four with their three, and he was wide open, but the pass went off his fingertips. 18 to 15. Bradley uh, out rebounding the Sycamores 11 to 7 this stage. Post pass and a shot, and not good. Bird has the rebound, taken by Jenkins. He missed it off the front edge of the rim. Reed, left side, Heaton on the move, firing and missing, and Howard uh, Harold McMath comes down with it. Bradley playing good basketball. Here at Roberts Fieldhouse. Low pass cross court. Garrett looks for McMath. Lob pass to Garrett in the lane spinning, throwing it under. Bad pass. Bobby Heaton comes out with it. That's another turnover for Bradley. I think that's only the fourth in the game. That's right. Two for each team. Two each. Reed to Nix. Carl doesn't shoot. Anderson picks him up. Now Reed will pop from about 21, and Steve will hit it. Yes. And that's four for Steve. He it did looks... not score against Bradley in the first game. Yes, and it appears that if the Sycamores come down and just uh, let them set their defense, look around, they'll find the open yes, end quickly right. and get the 15-footer. Because you're going to have somebody open you with bet. two on uh, Larry. Over the head pass, left side, Mitchell Anderson. A jump shot from 12 is not good. They fight for the rebound, and it's finally recovered and knocked out of bounds by... Alex Gilbert. 20 to 15, Indiana State. 
and timeout's been called. We'll be back in 60 seconds with the Sycamores leading by five. This is the voice of the Sycamores. 70 calories. That's for me. That's extra light. Half the calories on the taste. Naturally. How do you like that beer? We love it. That's because naturally brewed Pabst Extra Light has 70 calories, half the calories of our regular beer. It's a lot less filling, and I get all the taste I want. Pabst Extra Light, half the calories, all the taste, naturally. Don't say light. Say extra light. Let's face it, all banking is pretty much the same because of a lot of government regulations. It's really only the banks that differ in the people they have and the services they offer. Naturally, we don't think you can find a better place to bank than Terre Haute First National. But that's for you to decide. Over the months, we intend to tell you about the banking business and banks. More and more, more. Left to play in the first half, Indiana State 20, Bradley 15. For the game, Bradley 7 out of 24, 29% from the field. From the line, 1 out of 2, and Indiana State 10 out of 18 from the field. Larry Bird has not had a shot. They've been double-teaming him with McMath and Maniscalco, but it's been leaving somebody else open. Yes, it's calculated risk. Uh, they're paying the price for yes. uh, covering a four with three. They're keeping Bird down, but they're still behind. There's a shot good by Garrett at the baseline, and that's eight for Ken Garrett. 20 to 17, Bradley down by three with 10.35 left in the half. They come down to set it up. Reed bounces to Carl Nix. Nix back to Reed, Heaton is open, doesn't shoot. Back to Reed, on to Nix. Nix from the right wing, fires, not good. Deep rebound to Steve Reed. Back to Carl Nix again. Underneath to Gilbert, he's there in a slam dunk and a foul is called and it'll count. And Gilbert went up for that when the basket counts. The foul was on, number 33, Robert Jenkins, his first. That was a good look. Very, very nice pass inside to Alex. You see him go up, and uh, you can see Jenkins going up and getting him on the arm. That's two for Alex, and a chance for a three-point play, and Leroy Staley's in for Bob Heaton. Alex Gilbert with a free throw, and uh, missed everything. <laughs> Air ball, good arch, but not enough distance. Yeah, right. Team rebound. 22 to 17, Indiana State by five. Substitution number 53, Ron Linfors replaces Ken Garrett. Garrett with eight points leaves. Linfors, six foot 10 freshman from Bensonville, Illinois, averages 2.2 points a game, 59% from the field, 57% from the line. Garrett to Linfors. Quick pass left side to Anderson. Looks for Garrett, now takes Staley down to the baseline. Jump shot from nine, not good, and a foul on Leroy Staley. And that's his first foul. Southern Illinois 41, West Texas 25 at halftime. That's not anything. Leroy with uh, good solid defense there for uh, on Mitchell Anderson uh, at the last moment when Mitchell shot got him on the elbow. Free throw by Anderson is in. That gives him six. He was fouled in the act, gets a pair of free throws and seven for Anderson. Now 22 to 19, 10 minutes and 5 seconds left to play in the half. Indiana State leads it by 3, and Steve Reed has possession. And the Sycamores set it up offensively. Still, they have two men, McMath and Maniscalco and Bird. There's a long one by Leroy off the glass and in beautifully. Well, they're paying the price, as you right. said, Dwayne. They've got Larry to the point where I don't think anybody can ever get the ball to him, really. Now in they're front of him uh, and behind him. Yes, and uh, both men facing him, which is important. They're not uh, paying any attention to the other players. 24 to 19. We'll see if this strategy works. It's the first time that Larry Bird's seen that this season. There's a Menescalco starting fire. Doesn't do it. Anderson now works around a screen. Doesn't shoot. Back to McMath. McMath works, goes baseline, throws a pass down low, and a layup is good by Robert Jenkins. Yes, Harold it's McMath with an excellent assist. He went up as if to shoot and uh, then laid the ball off. Very nice play. 24 to 21, 9 17. I'm sure if this does work out tonight, you'll see a lot of teams use this That's strategy. Right. But uh, they might hold Larry down. There's Reed. No, throwing off to Carl. He's open. Doesn't shoot. Back to Steve. Steve from the top of the circle. Off to Leroy. He fires again. A long one off the glass. Not there. And Mitch Anderson takes it down. 24 to 21. Bradley could come to within one here with 8.54 left to play in the first half. Maniscalco right wing to Jenkins. Jenkins now lobs it low, but Maniscalco comes back out of the traffic. Off to McMath from 13. He missed it. 
Rebound saved by Bird. Gets it back nicely to Gilbert. Clears it up to Nix. And Nix up court quickly one-on-one -on, -one on Maniscalco. Stops, goes up the lane. Puts one up from nine and missed it. Cleared quickly by Jenkins off to Maniscalco. He heads down the left side of the lane. Shoots on the run and missed it. Tipped up once. Not good. Lynn pours up. Not good. Cleared out again by Anderson. Puts it up and got it. They're really rebounding. Yes, again, uh, they're not uh, having just a great shooting night, uh, shooting percentage-wise, but they're hitting the offensive board so very, very well. 24 to 23. Indiana State by just one now. Carl Nix at the left wing. Reed. Notches to Carl. Open. Oh, doesn't shoot. We have a whistle of three-second violation. Fans are really getting stirred up here. Yes, the Bradley superiority in rebounding is now 18 to 10, and most of those on that offensive uh, end. Time out. We'll be back in 60 seconds. This is the voice of the Sycamore. Now with me, so you'll find a soup. Doop, doop, doop. Back again at uh, Roberts Robertson Fieldhouse, Bob Forbes, Wayne Clee. It's 24 to 23, Indiana State by one with 7.54 left to play in the half. They have completely shut down Larry Bird. He's taken, I think, uh, handled the ball only once, I think. Yes, he's he? only handled and the ball once. Hasn't taken a shot. Hasn't received the uh, ball uh, in any kind of uh, position to get a shot off. He really hasn't received the ball. Though. So they've been uh, successful of shutting down Larry, but they're still trailing. Yes, well, the other uh, other four are finding themselves with uh, some shots, and they don't freeze up a little. Uh, they can still break this thing open. Maniscalco on the right wing to Robert Jenkins to Linfors. And deep right side of Maniscalco penetrates the baseline. Down low, turnaround jump shot, not good. And Staley fights for it nicely and saves it. Out to Brad Miley, who's back in, up to Bobby Heaton. They've only committed two team fouls, Indiana State four. Staley, baseline, puts it up and scores from four feet away. High arching shot for Leroy's fourth point. That puts the Sycamores up by three again with 7.20 left to play in the half. Right side, now back to Maniscalco. To Mitch Anderson. Backs into Miley, shoots off the glass and scores beautifully. Hey, that, uh, that's an awfully nice move that Mitchell Anderson made and shot off balance on his, uh, uh, really his weak side. So Mitchell Anderson is going to be some kind of a star. There's no doubt about it. He's only a freshman. It's 26-25. Uh, Heaton. Open. Doesn't shoot. There's a whistle and a foul. It'll be on uh, Larry Bird. I didn't see that. I was looking away from the uh, action. Yes, I was watching out front. Uh, but evidently, Larry tried to make a move to get open. And uh, they were ready to get in front of him. And he got caught for the charge. So that's the first foul on Larry. And that's the fifth 16 foul against uh, the Sycamores. So they'll go into the bonus on the next foul. Anderson, left side, McMath. McMath now bounces the ball, dribble once, and throws the Linton Fours around to the corner. Down low, Maniscalco shot partially blocked in the hands of Leroy Staley. Leroy clears it out quickly on the dribble. Now slows it down. Indiana State leads by a point. Back to Carl Nix. 6.20 left to play in the half. Carl starts to set it up over to Bobby Heaton. Bobby fires from 20 and hits it. It is. Four for Reed, four for Heaton, four for Staley. All outside. 28 to 25. Indiana State leads with 6.05 left in the first half. Maniscalco, high post to McMahon. Bob right side. Anderson, a set shot from 12 is not good, and Heaton comes down. Out to Carl Nix. Carl, the left-handed dribble. Changes the pace, looks for Bird, throws to Heaton, back to Carl. So they still double team Bird. Heaton's open again and missed an air ball that time. And it's out of bounds to Bradley as Alex Gilbert checks in for Leroy Staley. Still, uh, Bradley doing a fine job rebounding. Yes, they're hitting the boards uh, very well at both ends now. Ken Garrett's in. Now Nix is out, Reed is in. And Jenkins sits down. It will be uh, Bird, Gilbert, Heaton, Miley, and uh, Reed against Linfors, Garrett, Anderson, McMath, and Maniscalco. 28 to 25, Sycamores, 535. First half, center court pass. Left side to Anderson, Miley's on him. Back to McMath, right side it goes. Garrett charges up and dumps, dumps it off the glass and in. That's 10 for Ken Garrett as he took the dribble, penetrated, Bounced it off the glass and in. 
to put Bradley back to within one. Reed at the lane to Bob Heaton. Lost the handle, gets it back. Now Reed from the top. No throws to Heaton from 12. Missed it, though. They fight for the ball. Loose ball on the floor. Jump ball. Bobby Heaton will be in on the jump ball, along, I think, with Lynn Forrest. Lynn Forrest, six foot ten, Freshman from Bensonville, Illinois. Jumps against Bobby Heaton, 6'5". Sycamore is doing a pretty good job of working against this little uh, three-man zone but uh, missing the shot here in the last uh, three possessions. Half control to Reed, steals it away from Maniscalco. Reed from the top of the circle, fires and missed it. Got his own rebound, lost it, the foul is called. And it's on, I think, Mitch Anderson. On Bradley. They got away and uh, went for the ball. Mitch Anderson fouled him. Well, he's making it difficult out front. Uh, Mitch Anderson is uh, playing both our uh, our guards, kind of playing in the passing lane between them, and he's 6'7", making it hard for them to shoot over. Long one by Carl, and Bradley is really doing a great job on the boards, too. Bradley braids up. Long pass up court on the move. Garrett fires. He missed it. This time Carl clears it out. He's coming up court quickly, one-on-one. -on -one. Stops, penetrates, comes back out, throws to Reed. Reed from 18. Steve missed it. Gilbert up and can't get it to go down in Linfors control. Well-timed uh, offensive rebound by Alex. Didn't go in, though. Mitch Anderson, Maniscalco, got it, and got the lead. 29 to 28. Bradley takes the lead for the first time with 427 left to play in the half. Here's Nick shoveling it up. Beautiful move by Carl for his 12th point. He just laid it off his fingertips to put Indiana State up by 130 to 29 at 407 left in the half. Garrett over the head pass to Anderson at the circle. Around, lost the ball, gets it down to Garrett. It goes out of bounds to Indiana State. That's a turnover. That's only the fifth. third. Yes, fifth for the game. Three for them, two for us. So we'll keep it here with the score, Indiana State 30, Bradley 29, and 358 left to play. And uh, I suppose the uh, big story here right now is the uh, defensive job that they've done on Larry Bird. He hasn't touched the ball, I think, but once. That's right, and I, I think the Sycamore uh, strategy, at least it appears, is to uh, let him be the decoy, keep him all, uh, away a little bit off the front of the court, and uh, uh, let the... Uh, uh, Carl Nix and Steve Reed and uh, Bobby Heaton when he's in there uh, move the ball, get the shot from uh, out front 15 uh, feet or so but we haven't uh, haven't been hitting them uh, quite as uh, frequently here uh, uh, in recent possessions nor have we been able to get the offensive rebound when we've missed. That's right and uh Larry, uh, they've not been able to get many uh, shots uh, down under or in close. Most of their shots have come from 15 feet and out. Uh, there have been some exceptions, but uh, most of them have been without, outside. Yes, well, one of the reasons is Larry is, uh, is staying with uh, those two defensive players fairly close to the basket so he can be on the offensive board. And then if we do get somebody free to drive in, there's quite a congestion in there, so it's tough to get inside. To give you an idea of the scoring, Miley has four, Gilbert two, Reed four, Heaton four, Staley four, and Nick's 12. Even though Bird has not scored, Indiana State leads by a point with 358. In the first game, they led by 17 at halftime, so it's quite a bit different this time around. Right side pass to Miley. Now they're still uh, all over Larry Bird, fronting and backing. Here's Nick's penetrating the right side of the lane, drops it down under to Gilbert, he's got it. Excellent assist by Carl Nix. Four for Alex, 32 to 29, and Robert Jenkins will be coming in. I think he's coming in maybe for Linfors. Uh, Dick Versace got off the bench quickly on that play. Now open is Garrett, block, and a goal can on Alex Gilbert. So Jenkins gets his uh, six point. That makes it 32 to 31. Nope, Garrett's the one he wants out, not Linfors. Garrett's out. So it's 32 to 31, 320 left in the half. Right side to Miley. Reed puts it up and pops it through, and that's six for Steve. 34 to 31, they're going to continue to let Indiana State shoot from around 17 or 18 feet. Long pass baseline is thrown away as the man had broken away from that spot, and uh, Maniscalco had already let it go. And in the turnover department, that for Bradley is the uh, fourth turnover. Three minutes left to play in the first half. Indiana State leads it by three. 
Miley to Reed. He's going to do it again, and he does it there again. There we go. That's eight for Steve, and that puts Indiana State up by five now with 245. Yes, a few of those would uh, change that defense, I'm sure, just a bit. McMath on the dribble, spins, looks, needs help, throws in the middle, and there's a charge, and that's going to be on Jenkins as he really decked Larry Bird. Yeah, oh, Larry saw Jenkins. him uh, cut through there, got good position, established good position. Jenkins ran over him. Larry's really tough. <laughs> Ellie knows there's a lot of things you can do in a basketball game when you don't have the ball, and that uh, was one of them. 235, Indiana State leads it by five. Some perspiration or moisture water on the floor, and they get a towel. Carl next dries it off. It's Jenkins, Maniscalco, Lynn Fors, McMath, Anderson, or Bradley. 2.30 left. Here's Dix on the left side. Open, shooting, scoring. 14 for Carl, and now Indiana State's opened up a seven-point lead on outside shooting by Nixon Reed. McMath in the corner to the moving Anderson. Shoots it over Miley and, and got it, and he's fouled by Brad Miley. And Miley says, how did I? I didn't foul him. But the referee said, yes, you did, and that's two. As Anderson takes the shot, Miley got him as the bucket went in for Anderson's 13th point and a possible three-point play, and Miley's second personal foul. He is the uh, second player on the floor to receive two personals. Jenkins and Bradley has two. 13 points for Mitch Anderson. And the free throw. Good for 14. Anderson with 14. Next with 14. 38-34. to 34. Indiana State up by four with 2.12 left in the first half. Reed on a uh, trotting dribble. Sets, throws to Miley, bounces to Reed from 20. And in and out that time, Lynn Fors comes out, throws the ball, and Nix intercepts. He's open from 13 and missed it. Miley in beautifully. Easy tip in for Brad for his sixth point. That makes it 40 to 34. Indiana State really converting on that turnover by the Bradley Braves. Dennis Galco with it with less than two. Reed almost took the ball away from him. Now there's pressure applied on him. Lynn Fors into the moving, McMath shoots it and can't get it, and Carl Nix comes down with it. Up to Reed, Indiana State could go up by eight here if they convert. Reed to Miley, back to Reed again. To Carl, he drives, puts it up, foul is called, foul is on, they think Lynn Fors. Carl penetrated, Lynn Fors reached in and got him. That on Lynn Fors is his first foul. Yes, he went right into the pack on that one, and uh, if Lynn Fors hadn't, uh, somebody might have. That's only the 15 foul with 126 left to play in the first half. And Carl is hurt, I think. No, a towel, I see. Okay, they need a towel over there. I thought Carl was holding his leg, but uh, apparently not. He's a tough hombre. Larry Bird has not taken a shot and has only handled the ball, I think, one time. There have been two, minute, two men all over him. It's McMath and Maniscalco. Here's Reed with it. Bounces to Carl Nix. He starts, now he penetrates the lane. Goes up, puts it up, and a foul again. And it's going to be on, I think, Jenkins. Number 33. Carl Nix penetrated the lane. Tried to get that shot to roll off his fingertips. Couldn't get it to go. And Robert Jenkins has committed his third foul. Well, what this uh, different defense by Bradley is doing, it's just like uh, taking the, the, your best uh, shooter out of the game and uh, uh, making it a three-on-three. -three. The only thing is they're giving away that one man, and Indiana State's doing a pretty fair job of locating the open man and uh, getting the ball in. They must figure nobody, uh, the other people can't score, but they're doing it. Carl missed his first free throw, hits his second one for 15 points, and a 30 uh, 41 to 34 lead with 115 left in the half. In the left wing, back center court to Lynn Fors, right side to Maniscalco, down low to McMath, backs in and shoots and blocked by Gilbert. That on Alex is another block shot, his 23rd of the season. He leads the team in that department. McMath will put it in play in the corner. Tripping foul called on Larry Bird, he knew it. That's two on Larry and two on Miley. They're in the one and one and at the foul line, Number 32, Ken Garrett, who shoots 77% from the foul line. Staley is in. Coming out will be Larry Bird, who gets a rest. <laughs> yeah, 
Yes, Larry, uh, no shots. Three rebounds. I'm not sure of that. Here's the free throw, the one and one. Has it for 11. That's 11 for Garrett. Mitchell Anderson, the leading scorer with 14 for his team. It's 41 to 35. 105 left in the half. Indiana State leads by six. Could be cut to five here and is. That's 12 on Garrett for Garrett. 41 to 36. Five point Sycamore lead with 60 seconds left in the half. Reed bounces right side to Staley. Leroy penetrates, throws it back out to Reed. Reed over the head. In the corner to Carl, he goes baseline, works his way under, is trapped, comes back out to Reed with 45. Steve, off to Staley. Leroy now lost the ball, a bad pass, and that's a turnover. Now Mitchell Anderson on the drive, throws baseline, Garrett fires, he has 14 for Garrett, now it's 41 to 38 with a half a minute left. Well, that's one of the dangers of playing a team that's uh, 110 or 714. They can uh, take these uh, innovations and uh, use them, losing nothing. Reed hits his 10th point. Steve Reed showing how he can shoot from the outside. There's no doubt he can. He just never had to, but he has to tonight. <laughs> you bet. 43 to 38 with seven seconds. A whistle and a foul is called. It's on Leroy Staley. That is Leroy's second personal foul and at the line Maniscalco with a one and one shoots 71 percent from the line so the first half is about to end with seven seconds left Indiana State up by five Bobby Heaton will come into the Sycamore lineup so Brad Miley is out Bob Heaton is in Maniscalco has not been to the line tonight he leads the team in assist with 110 the one and one with seven seconds left. He has it for three points. Has a chance for his fourth point here. Second free throw. Good. Now the Sycamore still can get a uh, shot off. Oh, and Steve didn't want to do that. He wanted to go up court now. Five seconds. Heaton from 20. Heaton hits it with two seconds left. So Bobby Heaton does it again. Yes. Not quite as... Uh, Not quite <laughs> as dramatic, but, but, dramatic uh, but or as long. But right. Very nice shot. And that ends the first half. Indiana State, 45. Bradley, 40. We'll be back in uh, 90 seconds after this timeout. This is the voice of the Sycamore. <laughs> Sycamore is trying to make it 23, uh, 22 straight as it stands right now. They're going to have to struggle a bit. But Matt, Jenkins, Thompson, uh, Anderson, Maniscalco, and Garrett against uh, Gilbert, Miley, Reed, Bird, and the Knicks. The only player on the floor with three personal fouls is Robert Jenkins. They only committed six personal fouls in the entire first half. So they never got Sycamores in the bonus. We're set to go. Gilbert and Jenkins jumping. Second half underway. Tap to Larry Bird. Larry back out to Reed. Sycamores set it up. Reed, right side pass in the corner. Carl fires and missed it. Bird once, not there. Whistle the foul. Foul's on number 44, Harold McMahon. Larry going up after that offensive rebound was uh, hit. You can see, just as uh, he reached for it, his hands were knocked away. Wow, they're still doing the same defense yes. on him. Into Reed at the left side deep. Steve, ooh, throw the ball, and Miley wasn't looking for it. Yes, he was getting ready to cut to the basket, and the ball was thrown right behind him. That's a turnover for the Sycamores. Only their fourth of the game. Maniscalco, right side pass to Jenkins. Center court to Garrett. Left side to McMath. Down low to Mitch Anderson. Off to McMath from the corner, hits the flange, not there. Batted away, saved by Bird, but he can't get it. It goes to hits the uh, out-of-bounds line at side court. A great effort by Larry to try to save that ball, but uh, he just wasn't able to get it back to Carl Nix. Maniscalco with it. In the corner, lob down low, Anderson up and in. Fine play, Mitchell Anderson with his 16th point. Yes, Robert Jenkins threw just a great pass, very high, and Mitchell Anderson caught it in the air and put it in. 
Reed with his team up by only three. High post to Bird. Down low to Miley. He's there. Blocked nicely. Great rejection by Jenkins. Long pass up to uh, Anderson. Puts it up and in. 18 for Mitch Anderson. 45 to 44. Indiana State by one. Four unanswered points. Carl on the run, firing a 19-footer through. That's Carl, 17. That puts Indiana State back on top by three with 18.45 left to play. Maniscalco across the timeline. Right side to Jenkins. Jenkins now around. Nick's jump shot over. Carl is not there. Rebounded to the other side of the baseline as uh, Anderson fires and scores. That's 20 for Mitch Anderson. This defensive player just left Mitch Anderson to get uh, his own man, and uh, he knows where the basket is. He didn't hesitate. 47 to 46, Indiana State. Reed, yeah, Steve's got 12. That's his career high, and Steve's had quite an outside night. 49-46, Maniscalco, left side Garrett. Garrett back to Maniscalco. Bounce pass right side, Jenkins to Garrett. McMath, they work around the man-to-man. But Garrett backs in, shoots and scores. Rather, uh, Jenkins, I'm sorry, that's Jenkins' eighth point. 49 to 48, Bradley trails it by one with 17.45. Larry Another Bird uh, getting a little more motion now. He's moving a little uh, more. He has to be a little careful, though, so he doesn't run over somebody. Carl's open, missed it. Gilbert has it, puts it up and in. That's six for Alex. 51 to 48, long lead pass. J uh, Garrett, center courts it to Maniscalco. He throws it baseline. Garrett back out to the moving uh, Jenkins and a whistle and a foul. It's going to be on uh, Bradley. I Ken think Garrett. it's on uh, Jenkins or Garrett. It's on Garrett. And Garrett charges as he took the shot. And that for Garrett is his first personal foul and that's the second team foul this half. Indiana State with a three-point lead. 17-15 left to play. Reed to Bird. Down low to Miley. He's there. Ooh, it's ripped away from him, but a foul is called, and that will be on Garrett. That's what's happening there. Larry they now is stripped away. Brad went to the floor with it, and then it was stripped right out of his hand. Right. Larry's coming outside a little bit more, which leaves that uh, opening underneath the basket. Brad's cutting in and getting the pass from him. Third team foul as Linforce checks in for Robert Jenkins. So Bradley, which... Uh, did not put Indiana State into the one and one in the first half. Has already committed three team fouls in the first three minutes of the second half. Two free throws for Brad Miley. He's not been to the line tonight and hits his first one. That's seven for Brad. He's a 52% free throw shooter. 61% from the field didn't uh, miss a shot in the first half. It was three out of three. Second free throw for Miley. And it's right through. That's eight for Brad. And Indiana State uh, has uh, that five point lead once again that they had at halftime. 53 to 48, 1703 left. Maniscalco sets it up offensively. Over the head pass to the left wing to McMath. McMath with the ball over his head. And we have a whistle and a foul. It will be on Carl Nix. As Mitchell Anderson has moved to the inside and uh, Carl Nix is guarding him. Carl, of course, about uh, four, three to four inches smaller than uh, Mitchell uh, was called for holding. That's uh, the first uh, foul this happened. Indiana State, the second team foul. Maniscalco shoots it over Reed and hits it. Carl Maniscalco hits his sixth point. Makes it 53-50. to 50. Indiana State leads it with 16.45 left. Reed, dribbling left-handed. Sets it up offensively. Larry Bird still has not taken a shot. Bounce left side. Carl Nix looks. Throws to Reed from the top of the circle. 14, yeah. 14 points for Reed. 55 to 50. Steve's never had to hit from no, the outside. No, uh, I was it's just going to necessary. say, he's had to tonight. But and this he is going to make him. other teams notice it. Anderson shoots short, good defense, but got his own rebound short again. Loose ball, got another one, and got it. Well, he's, he's too good a shooter to give uh, three shots to. They just had the lucky bounce that time. I know, the ball it came right off in his hand. Right, right off the floor into his hands. 55-52, Indiana State by three. Reed sets it up. Whistle. Foul. On number 44, Harold McMahon. That is his third foul. That's and the fourth team foul. And now three on McMath, three on Jenkins, two on Garrett. Fourth team foul. Indiana State has committed one team foul this half with 16.03 left. And Indiana State leading by three, 55-52. Carl Nix will put it in play. 
Reed, Carl's open from 12 and scores. 19 for Knicks. 15-55. Bob right side to Lynn Forrest. Down low. Anderson works his way under, scoops it up. Good. What a move by Anderson. Yes. 24 points. He's putting on quite an offensive show. Underneath the basket with a right-hand layback where he got very high in the air to do it. 57-54. Leroy Staley in the game, a 20-footer. Leroy missed it. Anderson comes up with it. Down he comes. Stops at the lane. Knocked out of his hands, but recovered by Lynn Fors. Back up court. Right wing pass to Harold McMath. McMath to Anderson. He's up the lane. Shoots one up and missed that one. Linfors has it. Puts it up and in. No. Charge on Linfors. Will not count. Well, when Linfors got that rebound, Larry Bird positioned himself very, very close to Linfors. When Linfors went up, he first went out and uh, was called for the foul. No basket. So uh, Linfors has committed his second foul. Five team fouls. And we have a timeout. We'll be back in 60 seconds. This is the voice of the Sycamore. The Bradley Braves, 7 out of 11 from the field this half. 63% Indiana State, 5 out of 10 from the field. 50%, 2 out of 2 from the line. Uh, final score, Southern Illinois University, 84. West Texas, 56. Oh, uh, easy win for the Salukis. 13 minutes left. Drake leading Tulsa, 47 to 44. Sycamores lead here by three with 15-13 left, and Bob Heaton is into the lineup as replaced Leroy Staley on the right wing to Steve Reed. Now they still got uh, Bird double team. Bobby sets for 20. Good, that soft touch. <laughs> Ball just hung right on the ring. Finally dropped down. 59 to 54. Indiana State by five. Anderson to the moving man, almost broken away, but it's uh, gotten by Garrett to Linfors. Hands it to McMath. McMath in. Garrett spinning, shooting over Gilbert. Not there. Bird the rebound. Larry hands it off to Reed. So the Sycamores up by five, could go up by seven. Carl may do it and didn't do it. Now there's a foul on Reed as he bumped into Maniscalco. The first foul of the game and the second team foul as Steve Reed crashed right into Maniscalco. Was nothing, no way he could do. Both players, of course, going for a loose ball that was flying off. He didn't see Maniscalco coming in and was called for the foul. Second team foul on Indiana State this half. Five team fouls against the Bradley Braves with 14-25 left. Maniscalco on the left side to McMath. Over the head pass to Lynn for center court. Bird comes out, knocks the ball away from him. Larry's got it. He's going to slam dunk this one. That's the first field goal for Larry right. Bird. First he comes with 14-13 left in the game. First shot, first field goal. 61 to 54. Maniscalco. Right wing pass. Anderson backs in on Nix. Throws to McMath from the line, shooting and missing, and it's rebound to Garrett. Puts it in. He timed that jump. Uh, Alex Gilbert went up too quickly. 16 for Garrett. 61 to 56, Indiana State by five. Reed sets from 20 and pops it through, and that's yeah. 16 for Steve. Well, Larry hadn't scored, but Steve Reed's never scored this many points in his life. No, that's right. That shows you what he can do. This has got to make the other teams think. Maniscalco, foul on Reed, his second. Dwayne, uh, Reed, uh, the last game, Reed did not score a point. Larry got 27. Tonight, Larry's got two. Reed's got 16. That's some of the difference right there. Yes, you bet it is. It's 63 to 56. Well, as you put it, uh, Steve is finding himself out there uh, wide open. He's got to shoot, and he has, and he's been hitting. McMath with it. In the middle, open is Jenkins. Short shot, not good in air ball. He... Uh, Threw a brick up that time. Okay, Sycamore is now able to uh, maybe stretch this lead a little to the highest they've had for some time. They lead by seven, and Nix is open from 17, and they lead That's by right. nine as Carl hits 21. 65-56. They've done it without Larry Bird scoring, but two points. So really, they haven't accomplished. The only thing they can say, if it continues like this, they've shut down the leading score of the nation. Right. Zone defense now by Indiana State, and it paid off. 
They tried to get McMath through the ball a little too high, and Dick Versace is up, a little bit upset. That in turnovers. 10 for Bradley. Indiana State's turned it over only four times. Reed, a little hard, Bird up once again, and lost the ball, and the foul is called on Larry Bird, I think. Yeah, Larry making a vigorous effort to get uh, that, that ball uh, on the, uh, keep it on the board, was called for pushing. Timeout's been called with 12.33 left, and Larry Bird commits foul number three with the score 65-56. to 56. This is the voice of the Sycamores. If you want the best buy ever in color TVs, you see. We have 12.33 in the game. Indiana State leads Bradley 65-56. to 56. As Larry Bird has just committed his third foul, he's the only player on the Sycamore team to have committed three. So it's Bird, Miley, Staley, Heaton, and Nix in there now. They have only made one substitute. Now, Indiana State in that blue uh, defense, that's their zone. See what Bradley does with it. Mitch Anderson in the corner. Hands it to Maniscalco. Penetrates, shoots over Miley, and hits it. Eight for Maniscalco. 65 to 58. Indiana State's seven point lead with 12.02 left. Knicks to Heaton. Bobby looks baseline. Now heads to the lane. Looks for Larry. They got two men right on top of him. They got everywhere. Now Larry with the ball cross courts to Bob Heaton. Back to Carl Nix. Lost the ball, but now sets it up. And one of the difficult things of being played that way, they're also stepping in front of him just as soon as he starts to move. Carl back out to Heaton. He's there and he's got it. Carl Nix, another fine pass to Bob Heaton. And Heaton's in double figures with 10. Indiana State continuing to play an excellent floor game. They've only turned the ball over for the game four times. Long pass to Mitchell Anderson in the corner. Back out to Maniscalco from the top of the circle. And he's hot. He scores his 10th point. And that's their third player in double figures. Anderson with 24, Maniscalco with 10, Garrett with 16, Indiana State double figures from Knicks 21, Reed 16, Heaton 10. Bobby sets, he'll she let him shoot, he'll score, he will. 12 for Bobby. He got four against Bradley the first time. But the big difference is Steve Reed, who did not score at all the first game, has 16 tonight. And that's the reason. There is the ball stolen away and a pass that was broken up by the Sycamores. They lead it by nine, 69 to 60 with 10.45 left. Nix comes up court with a basketball. Carl, cross court to Heaton. Now Carl sets a 22 footer. Got it, oh, 23, that'll kill that defense of theirs in a hurry. 71 to 60, Indiana State by 11, 10 and a half. Indiana State staying in the zone in four possessions. Uh, Bradley's hit twice, but they've also turned the ball over twice. So uh, it's earning its keep. Anderson to Jenkins, missed it. And it's back to Anderson who scores his 26. They've gotten some lucky bounces. That ball has been coming off to where they are frequently. 72 to 61. Carl penetrates up the lane, lays it up and in on a great driving move. Carl with 25, he got 24 the first game. Garrett and Jenkins both were in there, but Carl went right between them and laid it up. 73 to 62, Indiana State by 11 with 9.48 left. We have a whistle and a foul will be called on Harold McMahon. That is his fourth. That's the 16 foul as Linford comes in for Jenkins. And that means that Indiana State the next time will go to the line on the next foul. So the Sycamores up by 11 now. Nix to Heaton. They may let him shoot. He'll put it in if they yeah. let him shoot from there. And uh, kicking the ball was Mitchell Anderson. He's going to be some star here, freshman from Chicago. He's going to set Bradley's uh, scoring records, I imagine. Yes, well, he's already uh, set the new freshman yes, scoring right. record for Bradley, hasn't he? Nix will try it again from 19 and missed that one. Loose ball on the floor, gathered up by Nix, lost by Nix. Look at that, Miley dive for it in a jump ball. Yes, he you knew. Think Brad doesn't really fight. <laughs> right, he knew he had no chance to go after that ball and pick it up. And so he just said, well, I'm going to get a part of it, and they'll have to fight me for it. Carl Nix and Brad Miley as Brad dives in center court and got the fumble. <laughs> Oh, 
Miley and Maniscalco tapped and uh, didn't quite work. I yes. think they were looking for that one. Well, a little cross signals there, but uh, the idea was a good one. They wanted to cap it up and get somebody to break away. Maniscalco, bounce pass left side to Garrett. In the middle, cross court, intercepted by Leroy. Now can he get up the court in time? He does, and he lays it in. Beautiful. That's six for Leroy. Now 75 to 62, Indiana State by 13. As they begin to move away, and Dick Versace, what's time? We'll be back in 60 seconds. This is the voice of the Sycamores. <laughs> Your Wabash Valley pun hunt. Bradley, 11 out of 21, 52%, but listen to this. 21 shots for Indiana State, 14 field goals, 66%, after they shot 56 in the first half. So they're shooting for the game right around 60. Well, the Bradley strategy was to force Indiana State to shoot from outside, not let them work the ball inside to uh, Larry any place, and uh, it's kind of backfired. We've got the shots, and we've hit them. Now they're back there, still in that zone defense. Indiana State's turned it over only four times. Anderson, there's Garrett, cut off by Staley. Anderson again, Indiana State really playing great defense. He's thrown away by Bobby Heaton. Another turnover now. Heaton penetrates, lays it up, and no good. And McMath, and they want a goaltending call, but they didn't get it. Bill Hodges is really furious. They set up in that zone again. That's another turnover by Bradley. Here's Garrett in the left wing. His team, his team is down by 13 now. Mitchell Anderson fires and scores from the foul line. Turnaround jumper for his 28th point. He seems to be able to connect from just about any place. 75 to 64 with 7.55 left. Next down low to Bird. And good hang on to the basketball. Scalco up court with it. His team down by 11 with 7.44 left, 75 to 64. Lynn Ford in the corner to Mitch Anderson. Anderson back to Maniscalco. Garrett fires from 14 and hits it. 18 for Garrett. That's uh, 20 for Garrett. They must have given the uh, Give Garrett some points. He had 16 in the first half. Here's a long one by Bobby. In and out. Up once by Staley. No good. Picked up off the floor by Bird and puts it in. That's four for Larry. Back to an 11 point lead. 77 to 66. 657 left. Left side to Garrett. Back to Maniscalco, up the lane, stolen by Bird, two on one, off to Nix, Nix down the left side, plays, slam dunks it. Oh, oh. <laughs> 27 by Carl. Carl really got up on that one, went right up over Maniscalco and dunked it. Nothing he could do. 79 to 66, 13 point lead, six and a half left in the game. Nix covering Maniscalco. Open is Garrett. Now goes baseline, shoots over Bird and missed it. Miley takes charge. Indiana State playing their zone very, very aggressively. They've already caused Bradley to turn the ball over six times since they started playing the zone. So it's 79 to 66. Indiana State leads it by 13. They won by 19 at Holman Center, and Larry Bird had 27 points. Now, now we're going to hang on to right, it. Now we're apt to see a change in Bradley defense. They're going to have to make a decision here whether to keep two men on Larry or whether to come out and try to win the ball game. Yes. And they got Maniscalco and McMath just right on top of him. And they want Linfors out there. So they got three men to guard four. Indiana State could keep it a long time this way as long as Maniscalco and McMath and there's a whistle and a foul. Or timeout, let's see. Woo, timeout, that's Indiana State. We'll keep it right here. Right. There was a foul, but it's timeout as Alex Gilbert will come back into the Indiana State lineup. They have the two men on Bird, Maniscalco and McMath. That means they got three men left to guard four, and Indiana State could stand out there, I think, all night. Yes, I think uh, probably Coach Versace is now uh, making an adjustment. He's going to have to decide whether in the five minutes and 40 seconds he has left, whether they want him to take... Uh, get out there and get a piece of the ball now and then or, or foul or whatever they have to do and they can't do it with the two guarding Larry Bird who's underneath the basket. He's kind of a uh, well a coach that 
does some different things, and he made a statement here a while back, and I'm trying to think what the statement was he made uh, here a couple of games ago. Uh, oh, me. Yes, he does come up with some uh, it's a dandy statement. I don't know. He might, he might be the type to say, well, we didn't win, but we sure held the lead and score of the nation down to practically nothing. Well, that would, uh, that would be a kind of a shallow I, victory. I'm yeah. sure, uh, yes. Uh, I can't imagine yeah. how he'd get much uh, solace out of that. I think if he does come out and uh, either come out with a zone or zone press or man-to-man -man and pick up uh, uh, all of the uh, Sycamores, we might see the uh, Indiana State really start going for the basket again. Larry Bird's been held to four points on two field goals, and I think just two, two attempts, I believe. Two for two. Miley, eight points. Gilbert, six. Nix, 27. Reed, 16. Heaton, 12. Staley, six. They have Garrett with 20. Jenkins with six. McMath with two. Maniscalco with 10. And Anderson with 28. Bradley with uh, just a slight edge in rebounding. 36-33 for the game. In the field goal department, one of our statisticians says uh, not ready yet. Nope, oh, they're going to stay with the same thing. Well, they are. So Indiana State reads back in the game. So is Heaton and Alex Gilbert, Carl Nix. So they're going to pressure. They got two men out looking at working with three. Nix, Heaton, and Reed are being guarded by a new man in there, number 21, Rick Malnati. Well, the, the geometry of the thing is such that they just can't do it that way. So they're just going to run the clock down. Mal Natty is going to wear down. He's running all over the court. Alex Gilbert, uh, along with Larry Bird, just staying along the baseline out of the way. So it's uh, our three ball handlers, Heaton, Nix, and Reed, playing against two of theirs. 454 left. 79 to 66, Indiana State with a 13 point lead. Little of the schoolyard game of keep away. <laughs> <laughs> now, they, now they're changing, now there they go. Oh, they yeah. one, Had they have left, Malnati has left Bird, so that leaves McMath. Now there goes Nix going through the lane, back out to Reed. Reed on the left side to Heaton and back to Reed again. Now they look for Larry, McMath on him by himself. Reed hands to Nix up the middle, finds a hole. Drops it off to Alex Gilbert, and he shoots and scores, and a foul is called, and the basket will count. Carl Nix with an excellent penetration, and then a fine pass to uh, Alex Gilbert resulted in the basket. It was on Garrett his third, and Alex Gilbert has eight point chance for a three-point play. And it's now 81 to 66. Oh, right ah, through the bottom of the net for Alex's thing. ninth point. 82 to 6. They have a 16-point lead. They're leading yes. by almost as much as they won by at Holman Center. But a different kind but of a game. Different day game. <laughs> Shows you that they have got more than Larry Bird. Mal Natty with it. Back to Anderson from 16. Missed it. Bird takes the rebound. So Indiana State leads it 82 to 66 with 358 left. Reed hands it off to Carl Nix. Carl goes to the right wing, up the middle, drops a pass to Larry. Larry passed to Gilbert. Gilbert puts, uh, oh, in and out. Beautiful ball handling. And Malnetti comes up the court with Maniscalco. Garrett had a shot, didn't take it. Anderson probably will. Nope, he throws it off the side to Malnetti, who scores. Rick Malnetti has his first two. It makes it 82 to 68, a 14 point lead with 326 left to play in the game. Reed around the left side. Leroy Staley waiting to check into the Indiana State lineup. A whistle and a foul, and it's on Carl Nix. That's Carl's third, and that's the team's fifth. Leroy Staley's come in. Alex Gilbert out. With 3.18 left in the game. Nix, Reed, Staley, Bird, and Heaton. Malnati, Maniscalco. McMath, Anderson, and Garrett. And Indiana State back to the zone defense. Now Natty. Off the dribble. Pressure applied to Maniscalco. In the corner. Open Anderson. A long one. Not there. An air ball. Loose ball. Carl comes up with it. They got a two on one. Now Carl slows it down wisely. Spins around. Bounces it back to Heaton. Heaton on to Reed. Staley in the right corner. Leroy looks for Heaton. Back pedals. 
Now he needs some help, and it's knocked out of his hands and out of bounds. It'll go back over to Indiana State with 2.39 left. 14-point lead for Indiana State. And timeout's been called. We'll hold it here. With the score, Indiana State 82, Bradley 68. Southern Illinois, a big win tonight. A win, though, that they, uh, it was anticipated they would win. Was that Indiana down State, at, uh, I think that was at Southern. Uh, uh, Indiana State uh, could actually wrap it up tonight. I don't think it's mathematically possible. They could tie in the standings, but by breaking with the two wins over New Mexico State, uh, that would clinch it. So uh, tonight, Southern Illinois. Well, if uh, Drake uh, that lost. was uh, at Southern, right. That's Southern. So uh, Southern is now six and five. West Texas State, with a loss, is now two and nine. And that's all we can put up for sure. Wichita State was uh, playing tonight. They were playing and leading uh, Creighton. Creighton. Let's see, Wichita State lost at New Mexico State the other night. They're, they're five and six. New Mexico State is eight and four. Drake and Tulsa were playing. Right. Drake was leading Tulsa. Indiana State, 60% uh, from the field, 17 out of 28, 3 out of 3 from the foul line. Bradley, 14 out of 27, pretty good, 51%. Play about back in. With Indiana State leading, 14 points, 239. Knicks, Reed, Heaton, Staley, and Bird. I think they're just going to be content to hold on to it for a while. Malnati pressuring between Heaton and Reed. Sycamores just taking their time. Reed around the right side. Comes center court with it. Handling the ball beautifully. On to Bird. They've turned the ball only uh, six times. Only six turnovers. Cross court to Heaton. Back to Steve Reed. Indiana State's in the bonus now, by the way. And a foul on Malnati. Malnati trying to uh, knock the ball out of Steve's hand from behind. Couldn't get it done. Steve Reed will go to the free throw line. I think they're in, maybe not. Yes, they are. They're one and one. Reed uh, with a great night, 16 points. Steve's been averaging four. But with this weird defensive alignment with uh, two people on Larry Bird all the time, and I mean on him, just practically stuck right to him. Let him move. It opened Reed up, and he came through. Steve with 17 now. Michigan State 53, Ohio State 55. And the Big Ten race is alive, and guess who's <laughs> tied? Purdue. Purdue is tied. He missed his second free throw. It's knocked out of bounds by Bradley. So... That's a real scramble there now. Yes, they kind of, they hung down uh, just a little bit, and now they're moving right back to the lead. Steve Reed on the right side. Takes the inbounds pass with exactly two minutes left in the game. Foul is called on Maniscalco. Carl Nix at the foul line with 27 points. So tonight, the leading nation's leading scorer, Larry Bird, has been held to his lowest point total ever at Indiana State, but it really didn't do anything as far as Bradley's concerned to win the game. No, and uh, you could say that uh, his role as a decoy uh, opened things up so the right. others could win the game. They're so. going to win by almost as many here as they did at home. They lead by uh, 17 right now. They won by 19, so right. it really hasn't worked. Garrett to Anderson. Shot. Not there, rebound, loose ball. Anderson picks it up and missed it. Bird has the rebound. And the Staley with 135. The Sycamores are gonna be 22 and 0 and 12 and 0 in the conference. They'll have it wrapped up. Ball is fouled by Garrett. That's his fourth. Nix has 29 points. So Carl got the ball and immediately was fouled by Garrett as he bumped into him. Carl at the foul line is three out of four from the line. And now four out of five and 30 points for Carl Nix. I think this is his season high. 31. 
87 to 68, 19 point lead. Right. With 122 left in the game. Down low and almost lost by Anderson. Pass in the middle to Malnati. Puts it up and scores a fine play. Malnati with his fourth point. 87 to 70 with 67 seconds left in the game. Carl Lips, guarded by Maniscalco. Hooks a pass and threw it away. With uh, exactly 60 seconds left. Long pass the left side and out of bounds. They yeah, turned they it over. Gave it back to us. Indiana them. State has turned the ball only seven times. Yes, That's an excellent a floor. Lowest game. turnover performance, I think, of the season. They played it, actually, uh, all around, played a fine basketball game. That's right, game. yeah. Foul, Maldetti. That's his second. Well, they played a kind of an offensive game where they didn't have to do a lot of, uh, of uh, inside ball handling. The ball had to be handled on the outside a little, so uh, they just didn't make the same mistakes. So a technical foul on the Indiana State bench. Might have been on Bill Hodges, possibly. Uh, let's so see. Steve Reed will have the one and one. Yes, I think this will be what's called a false double foul. Steve will shoot his, they'll shoot their technicals, and then we'll jump ball at center, perhaps. <laughs> okay. We'll have to wait and see. 18 points for Reed. Steve will have 19 if he scores this one. Does. I don't know what this proved tonight for Bradley, other than the fact they've held uh, Larry Bird to his lowest point total, but everybody else picked. It shows Indiana State, you stop Larry, so what? I think the, uh, uh, it all came about, though, the fact they are 7 and 14 and 1 and 10, and they say, well, what the heck, let's yeah. try it this way. Maybe it'll work. 30 points now for Mitch Anderson. Nick's had 31, Anderson 30. And you're right, it is a jump yeah. ball. Yeah. 89 to 72, Indiana State with a 17-point lead. They want timeout as Bill Hodges wants to get the reserves in in the last 52 seconds with the Sycamores with a 17-point lead. Miley will finish with eight, Gilbert with nine, Nix with 31, Reed with 19, Heaton with 12, Staley with six, and the low score tonight, and uh, keep this one in mind, it probably will never happen again, Larry Bird. He'll cut his average down quite a bit, come to think of it. Well, it, uh, it'll bring it down some, of course, over 21 just out of, uh, right. He'll go under 30 points, let's see. That will now give him a total of uh, 640 points. By 22. Well, that can't be right. I'm... Yeah, that, that's, uh... oh, I see, I see. <laughs> Boy, I'm terrible. I, I better go back to school. Uh, uh, yeah. I better go back to school. 19, 20, 29.9, uh, I guess. Huh? Yeah. Right at 30. There's the low one by Curry who scores. Curry. Curry. Nice touch from the side. 91 to 72. Maniscalco throws the ball to Garrett. He puts it up short into the hands of Crowder. 31 seconds, 91 to 72. They're going to end up beating them worse here than they did at Holman Center. They beat them at Holman Center, 93 to 74. It's 91 to 72 here. About the identical score. So Nimchek with 17 seconds. Stripped away, but he gets it back again, throws it off the glass hard. <laughs> he knew there was somebody back there. He couldn't uh, quite get the ball to him. With eight seconds Good left. Good idea. There's the ball, almost thrown away. Malnati's shot is not there. Curry rebounds with two seconds. There's the end of the game and the final score, Indiana State 91, Bradley 72. Well, they're now 22 and 0 and 12 and 0 in the conference. It was so close to the first score, Dwayne, 93 to 74, and this was 91 to 72. 19 point lead, a victory. Same result. Same but, uh, thing, and paths. almost, yes. <laughs> and uh, instead of Larry Bird getting 27, he only got four. But, see, Brad Miley in the first game got 10, and he got eight in this one. So he was pretty, uh, 
uh, Alex Gilbert got eight and got nine, so they were pretty consistent. But, and Nick's uh, 31 tonight and 24 in the first game, fairly close. Here's the difference. Reed did not score in the first game, 19 tonight. Heaton got four in the first game, 12 tonight. Stanley got eight in the first game and six tonight. So the big difference was Bob Heaton and Reed, and those were those outside shots they were getting when they had the two men on bird. We'll be back with this uh, uh, wrap-up after this 90-second pause. This is the voice of the Sycamores.